Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. <laughs> That's right. The studio that can do no wrong in 2016 can put another feather in their cap. Pete's Dragon is a heartwarming family film that hits all the right notes and is sure to be a crowd pleaser for parents as well as their kids. While it does nothing to push the medium forward, the fact that this film gives you exactly what you expect can come as a comfort to parents looking for that last great air-conditioned cinematic experience of the summer before the kids go off to school. Pete's Dragon is sweet and genuine, a charmingly old-fashioned story reimagined for modern audiences to enjoy. And enjoy it. They will. That's it for the capsule review. Now let's get in-depth. Now let me tell you, box office aside, I mean, I know not all of these were the biggest hits, but Disney, especially when you include every subsidiary studio that it owns, Marvel, Lucasfilm, the Walt Disney Company is having a hell of a year. Zootopia, The Jungle Book, Finding Dory, Captain America, Civil War, the BFG, and now they've made another solid, entertaining family film, a remake of the 1977 film of the same name, which, I'll be honest, I never saw it. Okay, I was aware of it, sure, but I never got around to seeing it when I was younger. So, if you're looking for a comparison, yeah, I got nothing for you. But this version is awfully old-fashioned, so I can't imagine that much has changed. Simply put, with simple being a word worth remembering here, it tells the classic story type of a boy and his dog. Think movies like E.T. or Free Willy or Harry and the Hendersons. A young child who, as soon as you see that this is a Disney film, and you see a young boy on a road trip with his parents, you just know that they're both gonna bite the dust before the title card. Anyway, that little boy is named Pete, and he's about four or five years old, and when he survives that car crash that kills his parents, don't worry about giving the young ones nightmares, it's handled very beautifully and poignantly. And then runs into the woods afterwards. He is saved, befriended, and ultimately raised by a giant green dragon named Elliot, whose powers, among others to be discovered later, include the ability to turn invisible. Six years later, the boy is discovered in the woods by a lovable forest ranger, played by Bryce Dallas Howard, who's got a lovable father, played by Robert Redford, who once saw a dragon in those woods, and he's been spinning the tall tale to the entire town ever since. They're joined by her lovable future step daughter, whose father, the lovable logger Wes Bentley, has a brother played by Carl Urban who, all right, now he is a little less than lovable, but he's not hateable. And here's where you're really going to get into the defining trait of this movie. The story and its characters are all lovable and simple. There's just no depth. And if you examine the story closely, you can almost see the places where the edges have been sanded off. That simplicity is not a bad thing, though. It's comforting. It's beautiful. It's satisfying. Look, when casting about for comparisons to hold this film up to, the easiest one to hold it up to is the BFG, another friendship adventure for children from earlier this summer. That one had a massive $140 million budget, was directed by no less than Steven Spielberg, was drenched in computer effects, and had huge expectations. It was a major swing for the fences with a lot riding on it. Now, Pete's Dragon is smaller in just about every way. It was made for less than half of the BFG's budget, it's more grounded in reality, and the only thing computer generated was the dragon. Now, I love the BFG, and I really enjoyed Pete's Dragon, and while it's not really fair to compare the two films, I will say that it's nice to see Pete's Dragon getting a chance in this age of mega-budgeted tent poles forcing the mid-budgeted films out of existence. Pete's Dragon is more modest of a film in every way, and every bit as charming. The biggest asset the movie has is Robert Redford. Though his part is on the smaller side, it's kind of ingenious to get an actor of his caliber to deliver a couple of stirring monologues, including the opening narration, that really sell the magic and wonder in a way that all the CGI in the world never could. It's kind of like a Major League slugger stepping into the batter's box to play T-ball. Like, of course he's going to knock it out of the park. That's what this movie does time and time again. It knocks every pitch out of the park so successfully, you can't really gripe about all of the pitches being underhand lobs. It's not innovative, but it is effective. It's moving and thrilling. And in terms of entertainment value, it's a solid medium bag of popcorn with a soda to wash it down. In other words, Pete's Dragon will give you everything that you could possibly need. Take the children to see it without fear. It'll take them right up to the edge of heartbreak, but without pushing them over into E.T. levels of trauma and ultimately make their little hearts soar. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop, and click the icon right down there to visit our channel. You'll be able to view all of our other videos, and more importantly, click subscribe, so you can keep up with all the latest episodes, and so we can keep doing what we do. Please let me know what you thought of Pete's Dragon in the comments below, and click the thumbs up if you like what you heard. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and Dragon! It's a dragon!